day of days. Westminster Abbey is the setting for the shore of the century as peers arrive for the coronation of King George VI. The Archbishop of Canterbury, who is to crown the king. From Britain's far-flung dominions come their premiers. Members of the royal family come to play their roles in this glittering pageant. And the great crowd surging around the abbey hail them with fervor. The carriage of state bring the Princess Royal and the Duchesses of Gloucester and of Kent. The arrival of the royal family is the signal for frenzied cheering from the crowd. The Queen Mother, who is their queen for so many years, is the idol of the British public. While the little princesses have captured every heart, today is their big day of days too, and they're enjoying every minute of it in round-eyed childish wonderment. moment the crowd's been waiting for. The king and queen leave Buckingham Palace on their way to the abbey in the famous coach of state. The ornate golden carriage with its crystal windows, its colorful postillions, and its superb octet of matched gray horses. This coach, built in 1761, is the symbol of regal pomp and ceremony. The route of their majesties and their striking military escort King's fighting men from all over the world is along the Mall to Trafalgar Square and through Whitehall to the Abbey. And it's one prolonged roar for the entire two miles. The roar of the British lion. Hundreds of thousands of throats in a roar of welcome and of allegiance. For hour after hour, the crowds have waited to see this great pageant of empire. Many of them for 15 or 18 hours. And now, their reward. The king and his beautiful queen on their way to the coronation. The war rises to a deafening din of cheers and exultant shouts of long live the king as the stagecoach nears the abbey. The crowds massed here have seen peers and peeresses, foreign potentates and visiting dignitaries from the four corners of the globe. But this is the supreme thrill. Like figures out of a storybook, the regal pair with their elaborate state robes of satin, of velvet, and of miniver leave their golden carriage for the next impressive act in this great dynastic drama, while in their ears ring an unprecedented ovation, ample proof of the popularity they enjoy. And now, inside the abbey, comes the crowning of George VI. George VI, His Most Excellent Majesty, by the grace of God, of Great Britain, Ireland, and of the British dominions beyond the seas. King, Defender of the Faith, Emperor of India. Eight thousand have crowded this old abbey to witness the ceremony that is as old as England's kings. The royal family, peers of the realm, foreign royalty and all the nobility of Europe. Here are gathered dignitaries from far countries, from the reaches of the empire, all to swear fealty to a new sovereign. Breathtaking is the word for the ceremonies. Eighty million dollars worth of jewels are on display here. The crown jewels alone are valued at 30 millions of dollars. A fitting background to a ceremony of pomp and circumstances that is unparalleled by any other people's. Pageantry that is England's own, unchanged through the centuries. So it's Hail George VI, and throughout the empire upon which the sun never sets, there's occasion for wild celebration. God save the king. The triumph.
triumphant procession back to Buckingham Palace is the most spectacular military display on record. Miles of troops and carriages, picked troops from every part of the world, from every fighting unit in the empire, in a bewildering variety of uniforms and equipment, here to do honor to their new liege lord, to show the world that the line of empire still girdles the earth. Premier Mackenzie King of Canada with his striking escort of Royal Mounties. The little princesses ride with their grandmother during the tumultuous procession back to the palace. What a day it has been for them. But there's more excitement ahead as the glittering parade winds its way through crowded London streets. And now the man on the street is to get his first chance to hail the new sovereigns as king and queen in all their regal array of jewels and gold, of ermine and royal purple, as they leave Westminster for their spectacular journey to Buckingham, a journey of state. And so that a million or more of their loyal subjects, jammed by the hundreds of thousands along the four-mile route, may see them in their splendor, the coach is specially lighted so they can plainly see their majesties. And what a cheer of loyalty they get. At Trafalgar Square, the crowd literally goes wild as the royal carriages pass. One of the most interesting groups in the parade, of course, is the famous Yeoman of the Guard the beef-eaters of song and story. Rain, off and on during the parade, failed to dim the color or lessen the snap of the famous units in the line of march. Nor did it dampen the enthusiasm of the cheering thousands on the sidelines. The troops lined the street shoulder to shoulder every foot of the way. Nations of all the world are represented in the procession, in carriages, cars, or on horseback, a tribute of courtesy to the newly crowned monarch of one quarter of the globe. Without doubt, the coronation and this magnificent procession is one of the greatest displays ever presented. The show nears its end as the famous Golden Coat, with its escort of male lifeguards and others, enters Hyde Park. <laughs> this most brilliant of pageants approaches its finale as the state coach arrives back at Buckingham Palace. And a grand finale it is, with still more countless thousands massed before the palace to assure the new king of their loyalty and devotion. Soon they'll send up their voices in a mighty roar for the king and queen to appear on the balcony, a sort of curtain call after the historic drama. Called unexpectedly to the throne by a sudden twist of fate, George VI becomes the 40th British sovereign at the age of 41. With his happy family around him, he is today's man of destiny and arbiter of the destiny of 500 million people. Long may he reign.